process. And it's a process that occurs when you bring to bear training, talent, experience, and incentives. And when all of those combine, you find yourself coming up with some amazing answers to things, so some amazing solutions, some amazing new technologies. Many of you remember the first Blackberries, and you remember how you know, the first time you picked it up you started using it, how it was a revelation, how we just work together. And we had spent so much effort to, to us, the, 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 the functionality, the function of the product was everything. And, and the ergonomics of the product were everything. And, you know, and it just came in black because it was, you know, the ultimate conservative. And it just came in black. And, you know, and for us, it was a big deal to put out a blue one. Um, but that was because we, we, we really sweated the details. We wanted to make sure that we built the right foundation, something we could keep building on for years and years and years. And, and we also came up with a UI that was easy to understand, easy to learn, and extendable. And we knew that we could add bells and whistles later. We knew we could pretty it up later. We knew that we could you know, add color to it. It was built right in. Physics plays a very big role in BlackBerry. It's always played a big role in BlackBerry. It's allowed us to not make mistakes. By trying to understand the physics of the technologies, we learn their limitations. By knowing the limitations, you know how to design the products and design the services to take advantage of those limitations as opposed to fall victim to them. The art of engineering is really a balancing act. We're trying to balance the needs of the customer with things like the laws of physics and economics. We're trying to combine all, all these ingredients of technology and materials and features and time, money, and we're trying to put it all together into something that has a competitive advantage while meeting all kinds of standards and regulations, um, being manufacturable, being reliable. We all use the product. We have this huge test base. It's about 8,000 employees. It just keeps growing. And what's really exciting is that we can try out these ideas very quickly. In fact, I chair a UI committee. And this, this is a group of, of selected, invited um, developers, engineers, uh, tech writers, artists, graphic designers, UI specialists, psychologists, you know, uh, mechanical engineers, all these groups, people from the various organizations within the company. And what we try to do is we say, well, look, if this is what we're trying to accomplish, what are the ways we can accomplish it? These kinds of things, you know, make coming to work a joy every day. And, and the fact that you have that and that you get to work with the brightest people in the world, we've assembled this incredible team to be able to work with customers and, and listen to how much they love the product and, and, and all the advice they give you about where to go and what, what you should add to it and what technologies and features they're looking for. You know, to go back and take all that information and make the best possible decision, something you can't do with a computer. Like, it is truly one of those mysteries of how humans think. When you're trying to predict the future, if you get it right, if you accurately predict what the best technology is going to be, what the best LCDs or the best display technologies or the, the, the best battery technologies or integrated circuit chips or baseband or RF or antennas or packaging or mechanicals, I mean, if you can predict all that, and if you can predict the right operating systems and back-end technologies and databases, which network technologies, which standards are going to be the ones that are, are the, uh, the winners in the future, if you can predict that right, then you, you, you actually score a bullseye in the marketplace.